Hi, I'm Simon Unger, the Chief Executive of the Procurement Group, and we've been saving UK businesses money now for over 20 years uh, using our procurement management techniques to drive down their business costs. We do this in all sorts of ways, but what I wanted to start sharing with you was some of the expertise that we've picked up over that time. And today I'm going to talk to you about what you do once you've placed, once you've signed an electricity or gas contract to make sure that that contract goes live, especially if you've got multiple sites, because what you can find is that if you've got 50 sites, 45 of them go live and five of them don't. And it's it's a nuisance. So what do you do to make sure that they go live? First off, obviously, sign the contract, keep a copy of it. And uh, and that's fine. Make a note of the go live date and put a note in your diary for two weeks before that. And what you want to do two weeks before is make sure that you don't owe the current supplier anything. Just clear the decks, cancel any direct debits for the current supplier and pay them manually. Get that cleared so that there's no balance on the account, because that's one of the most common reasons that objections get raised. Other than that, make sure that you're clear about the contract end date, because uh, if you thought it was a certain date and applied for the new supply to start the day after, but you got that date wrong, then the supplier will also not allow you to leave. So those are a couple of things which you can do to make sure that your contract, it, your new contract, goes live as smoothly as possible. We also suggest that you speak to the existing supplier, tell them that you're leaving and ask them to com confirm that there's no reason that the new supply won't be able to go live. You can do that using live chat, send them an email, uh, ring them. That's probably the least favourite uh, because you'll be hanging on forever. Um, but do it a couple of weeks before so that there's plenty of time. The, the final thing to do is to keep in touch with the the new supplier, the people taking on the supply. Get your account set up properly with them first. Um, make sure that they've got all your cost centers correct so that they and they, they, they've got the correct email address to send the invoicing to. All of that sort of information, your, your bank details, uh, if you're a, a, a not-for-profit organization or charity and you benefit from lower rates of VAT and no climate change, make sure you get the correct forms into them. Do all of that in advance. Don't leave it till the last minute or when the bills come through. It's just too much hassle. Uh, but then speak to them all of the time in the run up. So the week before, check with them uh, uh, one week before and then the day before the, the supply is due to switch that they've had no objections and that everything's OK. Now, if there is an objection, you will need to ring the existing supplier to find out. Unfortunately, all the new supplier will know is that there's been an objection. They won't necessarily know why that is. So uh, be prepared to have to contact the existing supplier. I hope that's been helpful uh, and gives you some tips. If you've got any other suggestions as to what can be done, please add them in the comments section below. Uh, but uh, I'll leave that with you. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye.